This is a Lee Filters 6 stop neutral density filter. This is also a Lee Filters 6 stop neutral density filter. This one will cost you about £100, but this one will cost you £179. So what's the difference? Well, in this video, we're going to head out on location to take some landscape images. We'll take a long exposure image using this filter and this filter, and we'll see if there's any difference. So why is this 6 stop neutral density filter more expensive? Well, it's part of Lee Filter's new range of ProGlass IR ND filters. Now these differ from the little stoppers and the big stoppers that we've all become used to in a number of different ways. First of all, it's the number of stops that it reduces light by. So if you bought a little stopper, which is a six stop neutral density filter, you know, that might be five and a half stops, might be six stops, might be six and a half stops. But the manufacturing process of these new ProGlass filters means that six stops means six stops. And if you buy a 10 stop filter, it will reduce your exposure by exactly 10 stops. So this should make calculating and getting accurate exposures a lot easier. The other thing these filters do is they block out more ultraviolet and infrared pollution. So this should mean your images and the color in those images should be much more clean and much more punchy. And the final change of these ProGlass neutral density filters is they have no color cast. So unlike things like the Big Stopper where it had a very distinct blue color cast to it, these are completely color neutral. So is this the end of the Little Stopper, Big Stopper and Super Stopper? Absolutely not. Lee Filters will continue to manufacture and sell this range of stopper filters. For many photographers, the qualities that these filters give are an advantage. They either like the sort of blue tone or the color cast that these filters give and also the natural vignette they get from when they shoot them with wide angles. So there's very much these filters will be sold alongside their Pro Glass equivalents. So I've already purchased my Pro Glass filters. I bought a 10 stop version and a 6 stop version. So before I sell on my little stopper and big stopper to help pay for these new filters, I'm going to use a time where I've got both sets to go out on location and shoot some landscape images. I'm going to take the same shot twice, once with the Pro Glass filter and then again with one of the stopper ranger filters. That way I can share with you my experiences to show you how the images look when taken with one filter and then taken with the other filter. That way you can make a decision to see if the IRND Pro Glass filters is something that you want to buy. So I've explained to you all the differences between the stopper range and the new Pro Glass range of neutral density filters. But all this technical stuff and paper is all very well. There's only one way to find out how they differ and that's to go on location and shoot some landscape images. So let's get going. Good morning and welcome to Dawlish Warren Beach in Devon, where this morning I've selected this location to do some long exposure seascapes so I can do my side-by-side -side comparison of the Lee Filters Little Stopper and the Lee Filters Six Stop IRND. So if you're a regular viewer of my YouTube channel or reader of my blog, you know that I come to Dawlish Warren quite a bit. So you may be asking yourself, why am I here again? Well, as I always say, when you've got a location this brilliant on your doorstep, where else would you go, particularly when you're short of time? But compared to my last visit, where I had a glorious sunrise, um, I think today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, the sky is completely overcast, but this might help suit the style of image that I want to try and capture this morning. So without further ado, let's talk about how I'm going to set up the camera to take these side-by-side -side pictures. So I've done two things to the camera this morning. First one is I've set the white balance to cloudy because it's a cloudy day. And I've also set the picture style to neutral. Now I've done this so I can see when I review the images on the back of the screen, I can quickly compare what the IRND picture looks like and what the uh, little stopper picture looks like. Now these settings are largely irrelevant when I get back home and I post process them because I am shooting raw. But it's a quick guide for me out in the field. That's why I've got the camera set up like that. Other than that, I'm going to take the picture and set it up and compose it just the way I would any other shot. So just before I get started, a little note on the apps that I'll be using this morning. Lee Filters already have an app for calculating exposure time when using their neutral density filters, the Little Stopper and the Big Stopper. So I'll be having a look at that this morning to calculate my exposure time. But they've also developed a new app specifically for the IRND filter range, which I'll also be using. So when it comes to actually taking the pictures, I'll do things pretty well the same for both filters. I will calculate the exposure time, put the filter in, take the picture, I'll immediately swap it out, put the other one in and take another frame. 
So hopefully that'll make sure that the pitches um, are as similar as possible. But because I'm beside the sea and there's lots of moving waves, they're never going to be exactly the same. But I think uh, in terms of conditions and lighting and exposure time, that should give me the uh, best results for comparison. So I've got my images there and you've already seen them on the screen, but I've already made a couple of observations just by looking at the back of the screen. First observation is the histogram on the back. With the IRND filter, it appears that the exposure has been a lot more accurate than it was with the little stopper. So the histogram was more balanced uh, across the range, whereas it seems to be slightly underexposed when using the little stopper. Another observation is color cast. I can clearly see in the back of the screen that the shot taken with the IRD is definitely a bit more neutral, where there is a slight blue tint to the one taken with the little stopper. And the last one I want to point out is the vignetting around the image with the little stopper, but that's clearly not there with the six stop IRND. Well, that's all my work done here at Dolish Warren now, and it's time to go home, process those images, and print them off and have a proper look at them side by side. So I'll see you back there. Okay, so I'm back home now and I've got the photographs loaded up onto my computer. So just to remind you, I'm going to pop up the raw files on either side of my face there so you can have a look. Now, as you can see, there are some clear differences between the image that was shot with the little stopper and the image that was shot from the six stop IRND. You know, there's color cast, vignette in, all those kind of things that I discussed while I was on the beach. But when you get back home and you post process those images, does the final output look any different? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up both processed images and I process them exactly the same way using all my standard Lightroom techniques. I haven't done anything particularly uh, fancy with them. Um, I'm going to pop them both up on the screen uh, and I want you to guess or see if you can identify which one was shot with a lock stopper and which one was shot with a six stop IRND. Well, you've seen both images and you'll probably agree that they look very similar. Now, obviously they are coastal images, so seascape, so there are subtle differences in what the images look like because no, no two seconds at the beach are the same because of the waves. But in overall image aesthetic, they, they look extremely similar, if not exactly the same. So I'll pop them up again, either side of my head process, and I'll tell you which, which one's which. But for me, um, they look pretty similar. I've also printed off both images side by side. Uh, and on this print here, we've got the um, little stopper version at the top here, and we've got the six stop IRND version at the bottom. And again, as you can see, the images are very similar indeed. So with both images looking very similar, what conclusions can we draw? Well, first of all, it is without a doubt that the images as they come out of the camera using the IRND are definitely more neutral and don't require as much correction and look a lot more natural. Whereas the ones that come out uh, when you're using the little stopper, and this will be the same for the big stopper as well. Definitely have a color cast and a slight vignette. Now, depending on whether you want to use those as um, those, those effects of that filter as a creative thing or not, very much dependent on how much post-processing you have to do when you get back. So for me to make those images look similar, it wasn't actually that much more difficult. I had to do some extra white balance correction um, on the image taken with the little stopper and obviously I just had to remove the vignette a little bit. But, you know, quite often the color cast can be used for creative effect and so can the vignette. I often add vignette to my images as well. I guess the question is, should you buy one? So the decision to buy one or not isn't necessarily straightforward, yes or no. Let's look at a couple of different purchasing scenarios. So the first one is you don't have any of the stopper range of filters and you're looking to buy a neutral density filter from Lee. 
Should you buy the IR and D versions? I think if you've got the budget for it, definitely yes. Any of the effects um, that you get from the stopper range can easily be added in and post-processing and you'll get a much more accurate representation of the scene while you're out in the field taking images on the back of the screen. So if you've got the money, yes, definitely get them. The other scenario is that you're already invested in the stopper range of filters. Should you go out and replace them with the IR and D versions? Well, again, I think if you've got the budget for it, then yes. Personally, I've uh, traded in and sold um, my stopper versions of the neutral density filters and I've used the money for that um, to invest in the IR and D versions and I'm obviously very happy with the results. Um, again, as I said in the previous scenario, I think you can add in the effects that you get from those um, stopper filters in post-processing and it's really good to have an accurate representation of the image on the back of the LCD screen while you're out shooting. And the final scenario is that you are already invested in the stopper range of filters or you're looking to get into neutral density filters from Lee, but you can't budget for the IR and D versions. Should you worry about it? Absolutely not. I don't think there's anything wrong with the little stopper and the super stopper. Um, since those IR and D versions come out, it doesn't make those little stopper or super stopper or the, the big stopper any less valuable or any less effective of the job that they need to do. It's just a decision that you, know, you either keep the effects of those uh, stopper range of filters or you neutralize them in post-processing. But in terms of getting cracking images, you're still gonna do an amazing job using the stopper range of filters. So what conclusions can we draw from this video? Well, I can, all I can really do is talk from personal experience. I only did limited testing with both sets of filters because I only had them for a short period of time. But for me, I much prefer working with the raw output that I get from the ProGlass IRND filters. Just before I go, if you want to have a look at all the images that are used in this video, there's an associated blog article to go with this video. You'll find a link to that in the video description below and at the end screen of this video. And on that blog post, you'll be able to see both the um, unprocessed files and the processed images so you can have a closer look yourself. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I'd really like it if you clicked on that thumbs up, give it a like. And of course, leave me a comment. I do try and read and reply to everyone's comments. And if you do want to see more content like this, do consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you do, remember to click on the bell icon because that way you'll receive a notification as soon as I post up a new video. But until the next one, I'll see you then.